Hey guys, all right, so I am coming at you today from a different perspective. I'm not in my store or in my candle studio. I am in my living room and my recliner. So, um, kind of an impromptu video, but definitely one that I wanted to record. So here I go. If this is your first time on my channel, my name is Jessica and I'm the owner and operator of Roundtown Candle Co. And today's video is kind of like twofold, I guess. I'm going to talk about two of probably the most important things that I have kind of figured out along my journey of starting and running a candle business. And then I'm also going to talk to you about like feeling super down today. So it kind of all ties in, but here we go. Also, I'm not feeling very well, um, which is the part about me feeling down. So I'm really gonna try to make this like a very focused and cohesive video, but just bear with me if it's not exactly because, you know, I'm just gonna do the best I can. All right, so jumping right in. One of the most important things that I have kind of discovered to date is how to balance when you have a massive goal in mind for growing a business. So I know that most of you who are watching that are already small business owners, or maybe you are working towards becoming a small business owner, maybe you are at the very beginning stages of just sort of researching and kind of figuring out, you know, with that end goal of opening a business. Wherever you are in your journey, I know that we don't do this for nothing. We do it because it's something we're passionate about. It's something we feel that we can do well. It's obviously we wanna make money. We wanna grow a business. We wanna work for ourselves, you know, all of those things. And so when you get to that point, I think that there is definitely a drive and you know, you feel like you've got to work really hard. You make a lot of sacrifices, sacrifices with your time, your money, you know, just all the things. I mean, maybe your house, you know, you're taking a room in your house or a space that was used for one purpose and now you're completely redoing it to be able to accommodate this business. So it, it can be, you know, you have that motivation and that drive, but then you also have to be careful because there's a fine line between being motivated and driven and, and, you know, focusing on goals. And then you cross over that line and suddenly you are in a spot where you are like burning out, frustrating yourself. You know, it, it can just get really difficult. So, I have found for myself personally that I was getting to a point where I was like starting to feel not so great. You know, I would have maybe a new scent or, you know, something going on and I'd have a lot of pouring to do. And instead of being really excited about it, I just felt overwhelmed, overworked, exhausted, and all of those things that really aren't great feelings. So. I've started to really focus on taking time for myself and especially in the summer. Um, we're campers, we're glampers, we have an RV. And so about every other weekend in the summer, we go away just from Friday to Sunday. And it's just enough time away that it forces me out of this house, away from the store, away from the studio, away from everything into nature, you know, we just get to have this sort of just a short time, but it's enough time. And what that does for me is incredible, almost indescribable. It's just getting away and being able to focus on everything except for my business. When, when I go away, sometimes we'll talk about business. My husband is also a small business owner. So, you know, we talk about business and different things, decisions, plans, ideas, and stuff like that. But we just don't really work. We don't go too deep into it. We don't let it consume our entire weekend away. So, what that does emotionally, though, is it allows me to just relax, take time to, you know, 
focus on me for a little bit, on us, on life. You know, we get to relax, eat good food, we take walks, we do the things, you know, it's like just all the camping things, the fire, the, you know, reading, want, looking at the lake, whatever it is, it's just very much good for the soul. And I so highly recommend that, not exactly camping, but whatever your thing is. If you like to camp or, you know, maybe you love to, you know, work out or craft or just whatever it is. But I find that since I have been doing that, it has completely changed my mindset and allowed me to refocus. So just a couple days away. So this is our camping weekend. So two weeks ago we went camping because like I said, it's pretty much an every other weekend throughout the summer and fall. So a couple weeks ago we went camping and it was insane because it was just like nice weather. We were right on a pretty lake and we took walks and cooked good food and stayed up late and took naps. Like I do not take naps at home ever, but when I camp, Oh, I take a camping nap every time. It's the most amazing thing ever. So it was like all of those wonderful, wonderful things and stayed up late watching crime shows, which is just so kind of like our thing. It's weird because sometimes you don't get a lot of, you know, channels. And at the end of a long day being outside, it's nice just to kind of cozy up and relax and watch a crime show. It's just a weird thing. I don't know. Especially when you're like tucked in the trees on a campground, it's almost kind of like gives you a weird eerie feeling, but so it was like so great. So we got back on Sunday and I had a little bit of laundry and stuff to do, nothing too major. And it was like, all of a sudden I felt like a brand spanking new woman. Like I was just focused and ready to work and not like dreading what I had to do. I was excited. And since that camping trip, I have made so much progress in the candle studio. I have noticed that I feel better about things. I don't feel tired. I don't feel worn out. So it's amazing what that tiny reset does. And that was just from Friday. We say Friday night, Saturday night, we come home Sunday. Short trips, short break. But oh my goodness, is that ever good for the soul. So... That is my number one thing that has helped me with my business that I feel is what is going to be able to push me in the direction of continued success. And I notice that the better I feel, the more my ideas flow, the more things just become cohesive. And yes, I can't stress it enough. So like, yeah, I get, you know, you have to grind when you are creating a small business. You have to grind uh, to be able to make it into what it is because there are so many people trying to do the same thing and so much saturation with every product there is out there really. And so to, to grow and be seen and be known and create this brand and everything that's involved is so much. It takes so much work, but you will grind yourself down to nothing if you don't force yourself to step away from that. Now, maybe you are working out of your home and maybe you can just walk out of that room and leave it for a couple days and do whatever you have to do and that's fine. Maybe you don't actually have to physically leave your space but for me, when I'm home, I feel like I need to be doing something. So it's nice to have that getaway just to be literally physically away and forced into, you know, ignoring at least the majority of it, whether, sorry, I'm looking, I dropped something, whether, you know, we have some conversations or think about a few things, but I just never allow myself to get too deep into it. All right. So the second thing that has helped me tremendously is tracking my business. And I have talked about this a million times probably, and I will, I'm sure at least another million. I use Shopify, whatever you use, it doesn't matter. Take advantage of all of the reports there. So also listen to your customers because I had a holiday collection last year that I released 
One of those scents was cranberry apple marmalade. People went bananas over that. Like I couldn't keep it on the shelf. I would pour what I thought was a insane amount of candles and be like, okay, now I'm good. And I'd put them on the shelf and turn around twice and they were gone. So I was like gonna, you know, take it away. And because it was to be seasonal. And then I'm thinking like, if I do that and I bring it back out, you know, in holiday 2024, I'm sure it'll be a huge explosion hit. But like my customers really like this. So I went to Facebook, I did a poll. Do you wanna see it all year round or not? And everybody was like, absolutely. So I have continued to carry that scent the whole time uh, since I released it and it is my top seller. I still have trouble keeping that one on the shelf. So look at your reports, look to see what is so, so hot that maybe it doesn't make sense to take that away. Look to see what's not doing good. So I went through and did an Excel sheet and was looking at the reporting on my sales by product. And I noticed that my tins are not doing real super fantastic. I mean, I sell them, but it's more like a trickle like here and there. So I'm looking over that and I'm thinking maybe it's time to dwindle down on the tins and go a different direction. So being able to look at and see it on paper. I mean, I get you can see it on your shelf, you know when you're low, when you're not, but when you're working with multiple scents, multiple sizes, different things, different time frames, time can get weird and you can lose track of, you know, what feels like it was last month, might have been 3 months ago type of thing. It just can get weird sometimes. So, I stay heavy on those reports and I actually will print them out. I will make my own Excel sheets. I will do all these things so that I can physically see the numbers and the styles and what's working and what's not. So I think being able to track and adapt is huge for business because, you know, again, having it on paper in front of you is a lot better when you can actually see a number and understand what is behind that number, how to adjust, how to adapt, what you need to really push and what you need to sometimes say, you know what, this really just isn't working. So it's just the way it goes. Those are my top two things for what I have found to work well for me with my small business. Now on to the part about why I don't feel so great today. So yesterday I started to notice that like my chest was hurting. And I like, you know, knock on wood, I don't get sick very much at all. Like I try to take care of myself ish. Um, <laughs> but I do like, you know, drink nothing, pretty much nothing but water. And like, I have an ice cap in the morning, but um, I don't drink pop or anything. I just drink water all day long. And I take my vitamins, I get good sleep. I do all that stuff. So anyways, I was like yesterday, I took a deep breath in and I was like getting ready to laugh. And I was like, oh, ow, what? So I start to be like, crap, we're supposed to... <laughs> Look at that little baby. That's my little baby. All right, anyways, photo bomb. So um, my chest starts to hurt. So last night I'm like in a panic. So I'm like NyQuil, DayQuil, you know, scooping up all the medicine. I took my NyQuil, I went to bed super early, slept good. And this morning I was like, I think I feel pretty good. You know, my chest isn't any worse doesn't feel terrible but as I've gone through the day I was at work and like my head feels foggy I just feel zapped of energy and so I am like really really upset by that because we're supposed to leave like any time to go camping <sighs> and it stinks because camping is every other weekend and it's like so special to me it's like such my thing so I'm like torn if I go, I mean like I could go and lay in bed or lay on the couch in the camper the whole weekend and like that's fine, I can still rest and stuff, but it's like physically going, physically, you know, getting things set up and all that. I just don't know if I've got the energy for it. I know I definitely won't take the walks or, you know, hang outside or do any of that stuff. So I'm like, should we just skip? Should I just stay home and rest? 
I feel like that's probably gonna be the best thing to do, but it is bumming me out beyond belief because I've been so excited. The camper's packed, the meals are planned, the food's prepped. Ugh, this is just the worst feeling. And what makes it even worse is if we don't go this weekend, I know it's another two weeks before we go again. So I am really bummed and really torn about this, like majorly. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I do know if I stay home, I will be working in the candle studio because I can't sit here the whole weekend and not do anything. I've got testers to pour and stuff like that. So, I mean, it is what it is, but yuck. I'm in denial too. I'm trying to like fake myself to feel better. And when I'm just sitting here relaxing, it's kind of okay. But then when I get up and start to move around, like it doesn't feel okay. So I hate this. I really do. But anyways, no matter what, I'll reset this weekend. If I'm at home taking naps, pouring some testers or whatever, or if I'm at the campground. But yeah, that stinks. Anyways. I am going to cut this off because I feel like at this point I'm starting to just get like bleh where I'm going to just be babbling and dragging this out. You guys have probably already left by now anyways. So anyhow, I hope you guys can relate. I hope you found some of this helpful. You can always leave comments. I do respond as long as they're relevant and nice. I'm not going to respond to junk comments, which I've had a few of. So whatever. But anyhow, um, I hope you guys have a great day. If you're not already subscribed, please, please do so. Um, I'm working really hard to try to grow my business in all the ways. And so you're just like your support to my channel means a lot. So anyhow, have a good one, you guys. I will be back with you soon and we'll just go from there. I'll see you later.